Peace. This is David from Lago Fitness. This exercise tutorial is on the split squat. So the split squat is a great exercise for almost everyone. Uh, most commonly we see it used when we're teaching deceleration to athletes. Um, when people have chronic low back pain, it's a way for them to avoid the hinging, folding over, and still condition their legs. It's also a very metabolically active exercise because it uses so many muscles of the lower body, which also makes it great for increased bone density. And it's also fun to do. So first, let's start out with terms. So when I say, because not all of us use the same terms while exercising. So when I say split squat, I basically mean a lunge without moving. So a very common exercise is a lunge. And a lot of times people will do that walking forwards or walking backwards, or even what I call a stationary lunge, where they come back to the same place. Now in a split squat, you're in that same lunge position with your legs, but now both legs don't move. So as I do the split squat and I finish, I don't return back to standing, which means you're going to do all the reps on one side of your body, and then when you're done with all those reps, you're going to switch to the other side of your body. So first, let's go over setup. So we want the feet to be not in a line because here, is much harder to balance than if I take the feet show this is apart. Let's give you a wider base of support, allow you to lift more weight, and make the exercise safer. Second, back foot. Notice the heel of my back foot is way off the ground. So sometimes with evaluations, we'll want variations where the heel is on the ground, but for the actual exercise, I like the heel lifted. It makes it easier to balance, and it takes the ankle mobility out of the equation completely, which is another one of the advantages for when we use the split squat instead of like a pistol squat, even a regular squat, someone's got tight ankles. So, from this position, upright torso, torso doesn't bend forward or backwards, you stay upright, both legs bend simultaneously until the back knee is just off the ground. So what are some common mistakes that we see with this exercise? Um, a few of them are, one, where people will be leaning forward while they're lunging. Again, upright torso, it should almost feel like you're leaning back, even though as you can see, I'm still straight up. An easy way to fix that is to give yourself some feedback so you know if you're moving forward. I oftentimes use something like a foam roller, which I'll just put in front of, in line with the front knee. And now if I'm bending and not leaning forward, I will hit it. But if I lean forward, that foam roller gets in the way unless you know that I'm tilting forward so you can feel when you're moving in space. Because a lot of times, especially if you're working out by yourself, you won't realize you're leaning forward. Next common mistake is the knee bending in. So the knee needs to track out by the pinky toe. This is not good. Tracks outward slightly, so you can keep the ankle, knee, and hip all in a straight line to keep your knee safe while you do this. Another very common mistake that we see is people falling and banging their knees on the ground. I'm not gonna completely demonstrate that because, well, it hurts a lot, but if they just plop down, instead of catch themselves, they smack the knee into the ground. Banging your knee against hard surfaces is obviously not good for your knees. We want this exercise to make your knees better, not worse. Um, another common mistake that we see with this exercise is the front heel coming up off the ground. Where people will be here and this front heel is popping up. We want the foot grounded the entire time. It, usually the fix for that is making sure people have a 
one enough stance out of the room. As you get shorter, you run out of room at the ankle and you make up for it like this. And that's a setup problem, so make sure you have a good distance when you do the setup. And again, don't be afraid to readjust if you need to until you find that perfect distance. Uh, usually I'll put this in the strength or the conditioning part of people's workout, meaning it won't be the first thing we do, because usually working on a new skill which is complex. Now if someone's brand new to the exercise, sometimes this will be a skill that we'll be practicing, but because it's pretty easy to get down, people have it, we use it when we want to build strength after you practice your skill work, or also for conditioning. For example, a great, great conditioning workout is go one on one side, one on the second side. Two on the first side, two on the second side. Three on the first side, three on the second side. Do that all the way up to the 10. And tomorrow you'll feel that your legs got a great workout. So that's it for the split squat. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. You can always send me a message. Peace.